Mm -hmm. You ever heard John James Audubon? Mm -hmm. okay. He wrote in 1823, Oh, patience, support me. How I labored before I could promote the first appearance of elegance. Practiced. You've seen some of the early stuff? Yeah. You know, not so good. And he was out and making a living in the wild when he was doing this. So what you need to understand is we have no artistic ego here. Everything, anything is fair game as long as it gets you to do this. Okay? So how do you get shape, the right shape on, in the right place on the right piece of paper? Why you can sit down and just draw it? Some of you may not be ready for that. I wasn't ready for it. Okay? So there are, there are techniques that you use. So we can, we're going to start with a photo. How do you transfer a photo to drawing paper? All right. The same method can be used to transfer a sketch to drawing paper. You make a field sketch and you go, well, I like that shape. I don't get it over here. Okay? So we can use the same technique. And here it is. We've got tracing paper. Oh, remember grade school tracing paper? Cool. Everybody's got two sheets of tracing paper. You've got a photo. I want to use that in my field sketch journal. I would get it over there. I don't know. I could do it on a light table, I guess, but most of us don't have light tables. So, you simply put the piece of tracing paper over the photo. Okay. And you draw the outline. <clears throat> so, the outline is then, unless you're, you know, can't write your name, it should be perfect. Okay. It should be perfect. So trace the outline to get the general correct shape of the object or the subject. Then you've got the shape of the outline. You turn the paper over and you simply trace it again. Okay? You're gonna do the same thing twice. Or here else you can just scribble. Wherever there's a line, you can scribble. So you've got it drawn on the front of the paper and the back of the paper. And then you turn it back over, you put it where you want it, you go over again, guess what you've got? You just go over it lightly. There it is. Perfect outline. Okay. The number one problem with all people trying to draw and trying to learn to draw is to get that initial shape correct. Because I, I mean, I'll be really blunt, after this, it's coloring. <laughs> Remember the thing we learned, coloring? Okay, it's techniques of coloring. So, here you have the outline on your piece of paper, okay? So, you wanna try it? Sure. Okay, everybody's got a calendar. That's why you have that calendar. So the first step you do is you open your calendar, pick out something that appeals to you. Doesn't have to be the whole photo. You use your tracing paper and your pencil. Make the outline. Turn it over. Make the outline again and then don't worry about the different sizes and things. Because this is just practice, you can get the get the uh, no, no, no. Okay. Underneath the notebook paper on the table, you have some copy paper. If you do it small enough, you can put it in your journal. If it's too big, you can use this, this sheet of paper here, the, the blank white. And you notice there's the, this is a non, or this is removable page, so you can tape it. And, oh, yeah. Uh, so, so you don't wiggle it around. This is a very important technique because it does two things. One, it gets your hand used to drawing. And two, after you've done this about umpteen million times, you don't need to do it anymore. I guarantee you, after you've done this four or five times, try it. You will be able to... 
You just use your number two pencil. You have a number two sharpened black pencil. You can use anything, but I mean any kind of pen graphite. But the important thing is for you to get an outline on a piece of paper that you are comfortable with that reflects the right shape of the object. simply put the photo on top of this, on top of your drawing paper. It's not carbon paper, it's transfer paper. And it, it will leave a very distinctive smell. It comes in for all of them, you know. So if you're too lazy to make the drawing twice, you can, you can use this. It comes in big rolls. The bad goodness is this is 50 feet long, you know, maybe more than you But you simply, it's got a it's got a graphite side and it's got a, so you put the white paper, this, and the photograph, and you do the same process. Unfortunately, with, with this thick paper here, you know, that doesn't work. No, that work all right. So, this is just another technique to do the same thing without, but, but you have to buy the transfer paper. And you don't want graphite paper. Or a graph, or a, what is it? Or a carbon paper, but that smudges and messy. This does not do that. So where does this go? Okay, this this can go under the photo and on top of the white paper. You make a sandwich photo, this the white paper, and just go over the photo, and it will transfer it. The direct process. Okay. So everybody's getting one sheet of this. Uh, does it damage the photo? Absolutely. So you don't use your, you know, use it a uh, Xerox photo or uh, you know some kind of. Does it? That you, they're not going to damage. Does yeah. it come like this? Huh? Does it come like this? No, it comes in a roll. Uh, oh, I've seen sheets. It mostly comes like this. Yeah. If I could trace off a photo. I'll, I'll sometimes first make sure if I use like a Sharpie or a marker that it won't bleed through my tracing paper, first of all. And then I'll trace with a fine Sharpie because that won't, as long as I don't press hard, I can trace with that Sharpie and not yep. not per, make a mark on the photo, but you got to be really careful not yep. to trace hard. See, I have access to a color printer, so I just print off a photo on a piece of paper and I don't care what happens. Or he wants to outline it, but yeah, that, that works. You know, if you spend twelve dollars on a photo, you don't you don't want to be okay. So that's that's another technique. That's for you to take home. You don't need to try it. Okay, now we're going to do you have a third technique, but before we do that, we're gonna talk about what everybody wants to add, and we usually haven't done this until the third or fourth class, and it's like, why did you do that earlier? So we're going to do it earlier, okay? We're going to talk about color. We're going to talk about colored pencil. See, from passing that out, my hands are kind of messy. Yeah, but you pass out a lot. Okay. One of the most important media that you can use is, is the colored pencil. Okay, everybody? Everybody have colored pencils at some point in your life? You know. There's a wonderful quote. I don't know if you ever read drawing books. What's the first chapter of every drawing book? Materials. Right? 
materials of art seduce us with their potential. Provide them. Right? Tim has the most wonderful art supplies. She's got better art supplies than her art teacher. But it's a frightening step from buying them to using them. Okay? And it shouldn't be. So we're going to talk about the colored pencil. All right. So the process of creating a colored pencil drawing, we're going to draw a view here. We're going to start with a photo. Here's a photo. I told you. Okay, I made a light sketch of the outline. Now, how you got the outline? I don't care. I'm just giving you two techniques, and I'm going to give you a third one in a moment. To get the outline, this one was hand drawn, so it's not exactly the same, but it, it is close enough. If you, if you trace it, it would be exact. Okay? So you make a light sketch, not a big heavy, just a light sketch. You can see the lines. Okay? Then you choose a color, and you usually go from light to dark. Okay? Color from light to dark. So, lay down some face color. Where did it go? There it is. Lay down the base color. And it's yellow. You can see it's yellow, right? When you, you know, so. Now, if you see the, the lines and the thing run this way and this way, don't go this way. But that makes it automatically look artificial. So kind of follow the lines of the organism. You build up some more color. You're like, well, it's a little darker here, you know, and a little more here. And you do this in layers, and it's a very thoughtful, and it's a very nice, slow process. You know, you don't rush through these things. And then look, okay, well, in between, you wonder, how do you get those yellow lines? They were there already. You just put everything in between them. Okay, so this is a different color, the green. So this is one, two, three steps into the process. Fourth step, you added, you added some more color, you added this, you know, you put a little detail in there. That's, that's step number four. And finally, you overlay the, the whole thing with a blue or a blue-green to get to kind of match the color. And then you say, I'm done. Okay, stop. Does it look like a Luna? Yep. Black like a little cup. You know, it's not exact. We don't care. It's a fine representation of a lunar moth in five steps. The most important step was what? Getting the outline. It can be beautiful if it's all, it still looks like a third grader did it. The outline is wrong. Okay? The outline is the most important thing, so take time to do that. And this skill, as you do this, this skill comes pretty naturally. Okay, I'll we'll show you some. All right. So in your in your book, there are in the sheet called color blending exercise. You need to know how your color pencils work. Okay, and there are lots of different kinds of colored pencils. We're not going to be color pencil snobs here. Crayola color pencils work just fine. They're the cheapest. Okay? We're not going to give you color pencils. We've got boxes that we could use. If you're serious about this and you want Prismacolor, we would recommend. Prismacolor, not very cheap. There's a handout in this. But Prismacolor wax based pencils. And we use wax based, but you can blend it. Okay? If you want to spend all the money, that's fine. Color pencils are, good color pencils are about a dollar a piece. The Crayola pencils are 29 cents. I don't know, but who can take, who cares, you know? You, you do whatever you want to do. You have a, Amanda, you have a set of Christmas colors like that, okay? They come 
You can get as big a sets as you want, you know. You can get by with four or five colors if you're willing to 